Investor's Edge with Gary Kaltbaum. Straight talk about you and your money. Now from the BizTalk studios, here is Gary Kaltbaum. And welcome once again to Investor's Edge. I'm Gary Kulp. I'm your host. Hey, thanks for being with us today. Glad you're here, ladies and gentlemen. Happy that you are listening. It is May 22nd. It's Wednesday. It's 2024. Hope you're having a good day. We have lots to cover. I must tell you, as I speak, it's 3.55 p.m. They're jacking the market all over the map in the last 30 minutes, where the NASDAQ went from down 100 and 10 to down 40, back to down 90, back to down 50 as I speak, as they're moving NVIDIA like a penny stock. Uh, NVIDIA is reporting after the close. So really all this, who the hell cares? We'll see what happens after the close. We have absolutely no idea what NVIDIA says, how it's reacted to. There's a couple of things in our thought process is that it's a high bar to get over, but they beat it the last time handily. And, uh, we shall see. That'll be in a few minutes. But first, and again, it's 3.55 p.m. as we speak. If you do not get this radio show in your city, we'll post it at GaryK.com. We'll also post it on our Twitter feed, which is now X. No, really. And you should follow us on X because we're pretty cool on X. And if you'd like to email me, just be nice. That's all. All you got to do is be nice. It's pretty simple. All right. I want to do some other things before N NVIDIA comes out because there was a lot of jello moving on the plate here. And as you know, we think one of the most important parts of the equation is what not to own. What is in bear markets? What is bearish? Uh, in other words, if you own Starbucks over the since last November, you have watched the stock go from 107 to 72, back to 80. It was up two bucks today. Starbucks, a, a great name. Or Target. I don't know if you know this, but it was down 8% today on huge volume as they miss numbers. It's topped out at 182. It's 143. But those are just a couple of names. We think 80% of the market and picking things is sectors. And we want to start out with the oils. So what have we been telling you about the oils as of recent? It's quite simple. In early April, we thought we call it a near-term high. What it just means to us is it rallied up and it got to the point where it was showing moi distribution distribution is selling distribution is selling by the institutional crowd who are the institutions the big mutual funds hedge funds things like that and we watch this based on pattern volume and how many what do we mean by that well what have we told you recently on the oils we've said to you their avoids, except a few names, are strong that stick out. And why are they avoids? Well, because they're going through now what we call stair steps the wrong way. When for a while, in February into early April, it was going the right way. And when you deal with commodities, you never know. Uh, OPEC can say something overnight tonight and change the playing field. We get that. But we deal in the evidence at hand. We deal in reality. And that's that. We're letting you know. And this may be good news. Oil's worsen today. To the point where the correction, the corrective work that we are seeing right now does not look of what we would call short-term consequence as it is breaking some secondary areas and tracing out what we would consider to be icky patterns. And when we looked at some of the names that have been the strongest, uh, something like Weatherford, WFRD, it's been one of those strong names. 
It was down six bucks today to 117 on double the volume as it broke the 50 day moving average. So a stronger name in Weatherford breaking support. And then there are a few others, which I don't need to really get into as we close the day. By the way, it's 4 o'clock, and we're not making this up. I think like seven minutes ago, the NASDAQ was down 90. It finished down 31. But we'll see what happens after the close. After the close, I had my earnings report here somewhere, and now I can't find it. Darn it. I have this little sheet about who's reporting earnings and when. We know NVIDIA, but can't find it. Sorry. We'll see what happens. So we're just letting you know when you have a chance and you look at something called the XLE. That is the exchange traded fund for the big oil. You will notice a top in April, a bounce that did not break above the top, a drop below where it tried to bounce, another bounce which was not that great, and rolling over again for a third time here, which means we'd still avoid the oils. They worsen today. The XLE, the XOP, is the explorers in production, looks a little worse. The XOP. And the OIH had a real rough day today, by the way, 3.5%. So we just wanted to start with the oils here that... For us, they're a voids. And in case you don't know, they have been a voids for a while. Except we've been saying, oh, there's a few names that are stronger. Next. Housing stocks. So we never really know the reason why. Uh, we read statistics. Uh, we look at reports that come out on housing. But we've seen what we consider to be crappy housing reports, and the housing stocks go up. We've seen what we consider to be good housing reports, and the stocks go down. Well, all we can tell you today is they smoked the housing stocks today which is of note, on Toll Brothers, which was one of the stronger names, uh, they cracked that three times average volume down 8.5% and cracked the 50-day moving average. But that's one of the stronger names. They took Hovnanian down, which is HOV, for 12% on 2.5 times average volume. And they pretty much took the rest down. Uh, if you look at the ITB, home construction, the XHB, both break the 50-day today. And we'll see what comes of it. And then I noticed something else today. Housing-related. Because kind of, sort of, housing-related stocks will go hand-in-hand hand with housing. Carpeting, things like that. William Sonoma, we're not making this up today. Gap, and by the way, this is not a high flying type stock. Gapped up $35 today on a 5% drop in sales. Whatever. It closed down $35. William Sonoma, a retail home furnishing company, dropped 70 bucks from the open today. And I would suggest it probably had to do with the housing stocks getting into some trouble. That's what I would suggest. So just another area, and I wouldn't call that a death knell. It's a shot across the bow. And certainly anything below the 50-day moving average and anything below uh, on, on heavy volume like some of these housing stocks did today, we'd be careful with the housing now and housing related. And again, they came out with some housing number today. 
I guess it wasn't so good. That's your housing. Next. Well, we've already been telling you how many real retail stocks were in bad shape. Retail stocks in bad shape. A lot of them worsen today. That's all. There's still plenty that are fine. No, I take that back. There are a few that are fine. Up next, we'll tell you about retail. I'm Gary. This is the one and only Investor's Edge. Hi, I'm Gary Kalbaum, host of the nationally syndicated radio show, Investor's Edge. We're not just handsome radio people. We manage investors' money for a living, specializing in fee-based discretionary money management. No big commissions, just a fee on the assets that's managed. We also provide a full range of personalized services, including retirement planning, fixed income, and educational needs, all to assist you in achieving your financial goals. Understanding not all individuals have the same needs, we'll carefully evaluate your personal goals to determine a proper investment strategy. If your current approach to investing is not getting you to where you would like to be, call us to make an appointment for a complimentary portfolio review. The number to call is 888-422-5559. That's 888-422-5559. That's 888-422-5559. Investment advisory services offered through Kaltbaum Capital Management. It's time to switch on the integrator units and get the brain cells working. You're listening to... Hey, this promises to be fun. Investor's Edge. The last bastion of quality programming. With Gary Kaltbaum. It doesn't get better than this. Now, on the oils... Uh, The president, of course, an election year is playing politics, so uh, they're releasing, uh, I don't know how many barrels of the Strategic Petroleum Reserve, and maybe that's what uh, put oil prices down today. Um, He also uh, forgave another $7 billion on student loans. The man is a vote buyer uh, in every way, shape, and form. And uh, you know where we stand on this Marxist high deficit, high debt, lying control freak. Uh, That's just my take. Sorry if you disagree. The facts say otherwise. Uh, We'll go through that uh, a little bit because we're going to have an in the news tidbit day today. Uh, But we are waiting for uh, NVIDIA and they're just taking their merry time. And uh, we'll see how it goes. Uh, but so far, nothing. A little bit of a wacky day today. So we mention oils, and that's nothing new to you. That's nothing new to you. Uh, it just worsened today. Housing has been, we'll call it okay. It's, it's teased upside, teased downside. That was a rough day today. Best way I can explain it. Retail. Well, we're just letting you know there's a bunch of retail stocks that remain just plain bearish. Uh, Led by, by the way, Lululemon. Lululemon, I mean, I don't know what the hell's going on there, but that sucker dropped another $24 today. And in case you want to know, the stock has gone from $516 to $299 since mid-December. You know, just think long term. You know, we have to make a little fun of that because the simple line about thinking long term is just make sure what you're holding is working long term. And it's a big wow. And I think what's happened with Lululemon, price conscious. I think people are realizing I can go to this other place, get the same stuff. Maybe it doesn't have the label and pay 50% lower. That's what happens, ladies and gentlemen. 
when people start thinking about price. You know what else I'm, I'm just noticing? Anybody ever heard of LVMH? Well, it's a luxury good company. Uh, I mean, all the high-end stuff. I'm uh, trying to find the, let's see, are you ready for what they own? Wow, even I didn't realize it. I mean, all kinds of champagne, Hennessy, and all kinds of high-priced alcohol. In fashion, in leather goods, Christian Dior, Fendi, Givenchy, or Giv Louis, Louis Vuitton, as the guy says from uh, Hangover. Guess what that stock's doing? It's, it, it's under pressure. And I'm also noticing Ferrari. Still in shape, but kind of topping out here. Even though I think they're sold out forever. It's amazing, Ferrari. But we're just letting you know, just a lot of retail is in bad shape. Uh, AutoZone, they just blasted that thing on earnings in the last couple of days. And, and notice what we're doing here. Uh, O'Reilly Automotive was already in bad shape, so the auto parts retail. You already know about a lot of what we call the software stocks, you know, I say my left screen. It's a screen of software, internet, technology stuff that have been breaking down. Well, guess what? They're still in bad shape. I've only been able to move a few off this screen. Just letting you know. And then we just watch and see if there's anything getting worse. Uh, I will tell you, you may want to write this down. Probably, I'd give it a good chance. Mm, better than average chance. That this commodity move hit a wall for now. They hit gold today, silver, copper. These are things that were having their way. And they just hit a wall. Remember, when things get stretched away from their norm, there's always an eventuality that they hit an area and then they pull back. And I, that, well, let me put it best because I'm reporting the news. That started today. We will tell you what extent we don't know. But it was kind of harsh. One of the strongest names is called Southern Copper. Dropped $10 today to one sixteen and change. But it's had a good move. So just letting you know on the commodity front, probably hit some sort of area of, we'll see. On the other end, one of the worst areas we've been telling you to avoid for like ever, well, actually not ever, but a long while, has been solar stocks. Well, what's happened in the solars is there's been a big battle. And there's been a price battle and tariff battles and all kinds of crap battles. And what's happened is basically China, it was reported by Bloomberg that they don't want to fight on price anymore. So the strongest name, First Solar, was up 18% today on six times average volume. First Solar, FSLR. By the way, we're not recommending selling, buying, shorting, or covering. We're just reporting the news. And if you look at the TAN, that is the something something solar energy index, you will notice that it hit 40 in November and has just been hovering in and around the 40 to 46 area, give or take a dollar since February. It made one run up in December to 54. Strong day-to-day -day of 9%. And maybe that's putting in a bottom. So notice we're talking about some topping and maybe the solars, and they're going to have to prove themselves, but very strong move today. First solar, easily the strongest name, big sore thumb. It actually moved above a little range yesterday, but I don't buy things in bad uh, sectors. But today, maybe, just maybe, 
out of the muck on a government said something or other and all that fun stuff. And of course, we don't know how that's going to play out. Then, what have we been telling you about some semiconductor stocks? We've been telling our peeps also. There's some weird things going on. And we've been saying the same thing about a few names. That there had better be an earnings recovery. Analog devices today. On earnings. Wait till you hear. I'm Gary. This is the one only Investor's Ed. Listening to America is talking. Investor's Edge. He's got to be pleased with that. The crowd is just on its feet here. He's a Cinderella boy. Uh. With Gary Coltbaum. Comes highly recommended. You're going to feel better if you talk to him. So, be, boy, we're all stocks today. Analog Devices today was up $23.5 to $240 on two times average volume. Make that three. Let me uh, tell you their last four quarters. Earnings, year over year, minus 1%, minus 26%, minus 37%, minus 51%. Sales, minus 1, minus 16, minus 23, minus 34. So in the last year... Their sales have dropped, let's say, let's call it an average, let's say, let's call it 20%. Their earnings have dropped, let's be generous and say, 25%. This one was 51. Now, if the market is about earnings, they've lo- earnings have dropped 25%. But the stock is at a new all-time high and a new yearly high. And what I have been saying is, well, they better have an earnings recovery. Uh, the same thing happened with Texas Instruments. Pretty much the same area. Texas Instruments, last four quarters, even worse. Minus 24, minus 25, minus 30, minus 35 earnings, but new yearly high. Now, Texas Instruments said something, well, we think a bottom may be put in. And analog devices, I'm told, moved off of that. But then I go look at the guidance that analog devices gave for the quarter they're now in. Another 35 and 30. Which means valuations are skyrocketing. For some, not all, some of these semiconductor names. Skyrocketing. If your stock doesn't move and your earnings drop by 50%, well, guess what happens to your valuations? Bingo. Well, we're just letting you know the one thing we're going to be watching closely, about as close as close can be. If these earnings do not show up, they're going to have valuations in the freaking trees. In the big trees. We'll let you know. NVIDIA just reported. I must tell you, initially went down $25. Make that 30 I now have it up $30 in the aftermarket. It just moved $60 in the aftermarket. They beat estimates, not by a lot. They gave guidance better than expected, and the market's reacting to it. But I just mentioned it just moved $60 in about 30 seconds. 
I have no clue how it reacts throughout the evening and what they have to say. I can promise you they will say nothing bad. But it is up in the aftermarket, and that's good news. As the semiconductors are bouncing, the queues are bouncing, I gather tech is. Initially, they went down. It's amazing little movements that are going on. So there is your NVIDIA. If it holds, and it's an if, it's a big if. By the way, it just dropped $12. And it was just up 42 It's now up 30 If it holds and get a break above range, maybe playable. We'll see. Boy, they're whipping that crap all over the place. But we're letting you know there are a bunch of semis. That's It's the weirdest thing I've seen in a very long time. How earnings and sales can be falling off a cliff. Now, I know there's this AI thing. It better be good. Because there are some stocks that have higher valuations by about 40% above their norm. By the way, including Apple. As we have told you, Apple for years was trading in the mid-teens while they had 30% growth. It's now trading about 30 multiple with no growth. Leaving the question, what's with the valuations? I'm hearing analysts say the market's not expensive. Oh, but the S&P is trading at 24 times earnings. But the S&P for throughout its history is traded on average 16 or 17 times earnings. So how is that not expensive? That's why we pay attention to ourselves and not what people say because there's a lot of misinformation out there, ladies and gentlemen. Anyway, good Crappy day today. Dow was down 202. S&P 14. NASDAQ 31. NASDAQ 100 was down 8. But if NVIDIA sticks the landing here, that'll be a help tomorrow. Especially, let's see, SMH. That's eh, up 1% in the aftermarket. I mean, not the biggest of deal. But it's a good thing. Why? This is the most important stock out there pretty much in technology land right now. It has usurped Apple by miles, ladies and gentlemen, based on the AI and all that stuff. And I'll have to add up all the things. I have yet to do it. Right now, it is up in the aftermarket um, 4.6%, but it's a good 4.6%. You know, there's been things that are up 10% in the aftermarket. This is a good 46 We'll see if it sticks. So there's your NVIDIA. Uh, Synopsis is gagging in the aftermarket. Elf Cosmetics is gagging in the aftermarket. So other things not so great. But the head honcho, top dog, big cheese, good. And tomorrow could get interesting, depending on what else comes out. Now, what else? Well... The president used the biggest slush fund in history today, again, and handed out $7 billion of our tax dollars, saying he did it. He gave it out. No, no, no. We did. To uh, student loans. To relieve people of their loans. And I just write down some questions as, he's, as the Marxist control freak buyer of votes in, in the White House, who, again, releasing a m- bunch of oil to get oil prices down in the election year, trying to put an immigration bill now on the floor after three years of destroying our border. It's, it's laughable. Here's my question, and you may all chime in. What do you tell the students that are not being relieved of their student loan? You don't count? Only these other people count? Because he is picking and choosing. My next question, why would colleges lower their tuition when they not only know government is going to guarantee everything, but student loans don't matter anymore? 
All that is being tax. We, the taxpayer, are paying off the frickin' colleges. Why would anybody going forward pay off any student loan that they take out? Isn't that a good question? You go to college now, you take out a student loan. You think you're going to pay it back? You even, pfft, I'm just going to take out a student loan. Screw this. Now, of course, Biden, if he loses the election, ain't going to be any more of this. But if he wins, could be another four years of gifts. But why would anybody going forward even think about paying off a student loan? And he talks about, well, we're doing a bunch of this for public servants. Here's my question. What's next? Public servants, you're going to pay off their rent, their mortgages, their car loans? At what point does it end? Good question, huh? I think so. And the, my last question is, how did he ever get the power to do this? You know, we always thought there were three branches of government. And in order to move money around, doesn't that start with the House, with the budget? Then Senate? Then signed by the President? How do we get to this point? Ladies and gentlemen, I can't use the word on radio, but I'm thinking of a letter that comes right after E, and we're blanked up. Talk about dictatorship. Up next, Tidbits. I'm Gary. This is the one and only Investor's Edge. Listening to. What are we waiting for? Well, what are you waiting for? One, two, ready, go. Action! Investor's Edge with Gary Kaltbaugh. And welcome once again to Investor's Edge. Just letting you know that Nvidia dropped thirty-two dollars from the high in the last four minutes. Uh, including today, I was showing it up $42. Well, it was just up 8 It's now 12 It's just moving all over the place. But let's just say this second is down $30 from the high. We'll see how it finishes. So I did the student loan thing. And you know how they're talking about Trump and democracy and all kinds, you know. There is no bigger dictator we have ever had than Joe Biden. I, I deem dictatorships based on Size of government, federal spending, giveaways, and all that crap. He has now given out $167 billion of your tax dollars to pay off student loans, 5 million of them. And some of them were full and some partial, I believe. But I repeat, where did the, a, a president of the United States, this is, this is not freaking Venezuela, is it? And what about the people that paid off their loans? You know, there's a video from a few years back of a man walking up to Elizabeth Warren and saying, my daughter paid off her student loan. She said, oh, good for her. That was what Elizabeth Warren said. And then he said, well, when is she going to get her reward? Oh, she's not. You catching my drift? These freaking control freaks in D.C. are getting away with I cannot believe. And they're saying Trump's a dictator? Trump's nothing. And of course the media sits on their asses. They can't see anything bad about Biden. They don't dare. I'm disheartened. Speaking of that, I think I mentioned yesterday, I'm going to say it again. The U.S. government just told us that the cost of health insurance has declined 4% over the last five years. No, I'm not making that up. In this CPI, they said 
Our health insurance has declined 4% over the last five years. I can tell you mine's up about 40% in the last five years, maybe more. I do want to let you know in the tidbit section of the show, a record $8.9 trillion of government debt is going to mature over the next year. Interesting, huh? Do you know what Janet Yellen's been doing? Some of the maturing debt she's been putting in T-bills when she's supposed to be putting into long-dated bonds. Why wouldn't she be doing that? Oh, because of the dictatorship at the White House. You see, if they had her do it, refund it, or redo it at higher, at long-dated, that may raise rates and that would hurt the economy. We don't want to screw up the election, do we? Next, it took Uncle Sam 232 years to accumulate its first 10, 10 trillion in debt, nine years to accumulate its second, and five years its third. Just want to let you know what they're doing to us. Next, uh, in the section of We Told You, uh, the Ford Mustang Mach-E electric vehicle was selling for 10000 above manufacturer's retail price two years ago. Today, the Mach-E is listed for 31000 and change. That is nearly 60% below the suggested selling price for a brand new car. That's your government forcing stuff on us. No, really. We are letting you know that manufacturing services employment has been contracting for the last three months. This has happened only twice during the uh, in the last 20 years. I don't want to tell you when. You can guess it. I read this quote. I'm going to read it to you. It has nothing to do with the market. Free speech is at its freest when it is hate speech against the Jews. Just letting you know. Stock concentration historic. Top 10 companies now reflect 34% of the S&P market cap. Think about that. 10 stocks, 34% of the market cap, 490, 68%. You think those 10 stocks matter? Uh, this is even higher than the high that during the pandemic. I mentioned the P.E. ratio already at 24%. It's being reported, I'm not sure. I'm trying to figure it out that the U.S. debt is now increasing one trillion every hundred days. Is that possible? Is that possible? They're calling about soaking the rich again. You know, the Marxist, socialist, control freak dictators. Just letting you know, the top 1% of income earners in America made 26% of the total income, but paid 46% of the total taxes. They don't pay their fair share. The bottom 50% of income earners made 10% of the total income, but paid only 2% in taxes. Fair share. Greatness. Revenue generated each minute. Are you ready for this? Revenue generated each minute. Amazon, 1.3 million. Apple, 922,000. Google, Alphabet, 665,000. Microsoft, 478,000. Meta, 309,000. Tesla, 194,000. And Video, 170,000. That is amazing. I don't know if I mentioned this, but the difference between Florida and these Marxist socialist control freak states that refuse to punish crime. Governor DeSantis just signed legislation to increase penalties on retail theft and porch piracy. That's how you stop it. Just remember, a lot of criminals are wimps. They know they're going to do the time. They may not do the crime. The Portland DA was drummed out of office in election. I love you guys in Portland. KBNP. My buddy Keith. I hope things get better for you. I hope the next person. I hear he's still in the office till January. And in case you don't know, the Portland DA basically told the citizens, up yours. He told the criminals, let's have tea and crumpets. And you know what's happened there. Hopefully it gets better for all you Portlandites. Is that what they call you? 
I'll have to figure that out. People from Portland. That all said, you have a great evening. Drive carefully. When you get home, do like we do. It's quite simple. Make sure you hug your family. Make sure you hug your children. They'll feel better. You'll feel better. I'll be on with Varney and Company, 10 a.m. tomorrow, Fox Business Network. Uh, we'll see how NVIDIA goes tomorrow. There are some things. Markets deteriorating a little bit. Have a great one. Peace out. Serenity now. Bye-bye. This has been Investor's Edge with Gary Kaltbaum on BizTalk. To listen to past episodes or to get in contact with Gary, go to GaryK.com. That's GaryK.com.